In this video, let's use XLOOKUP to get some data from a different sheet using some matching IDs. So in this particular instance, I have this first worksheet that has stock numbers and product names. And then down here, we have this other tab that has stock numbers too, and it also has all these other columns. So using the stock number as a common key column, we'd like to move some data from this table to this first table over here. So I'm gonna start with an example of just grabbing prices from here and moving them over here. So I'll just name this column price. So we'll start equals X lookup. We always start our formula wherever the end results are supposed to show up. So this is where it's gonna be. As a lookup value, I'm gonna use this first common key, this first stock number, comma. As a lookup array, we're gonna move to that other tab. So I'll click on my other tab. And then we need to select the column where matching values would be. So in this case, it's gonna be this column of stock numbers. So I'm gonna select starting from here, going up to here. That's my range, comma. And then we have return array. So return array would be the column from which we're gonna get values from. So in this case, if I wanted prices, that would be this column of prices. So at this point, I'm done with my selection. So we wanna go ahead and go to this formula bar, close parentheses, and hit enter. The important part here is to not click on different tabs, just go to the formula bar, finish your formula, hit enter, and we should get our match. There it is, the price for this stock number. In order to drag this formula down, we need to make sure that our ranges over here are absolute references so that they don't move down. The way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go back to this formula, double click on it, click on this lookup array part that will highlight this part of the formula, press F4 key on my keyboard to add this dollar signs. You can also manually add those dollar signs. Then click on return array part, this one, and F4 again to make it absolute reference. Hit enter, and at this point, if I go to this corner and drag it down, we should get our matches. Now for this one, I got an NA, and if we go check, this is the one that starts with 3120 over here. We'll find that that item is simply just not here. And that's how we do this from a different tab. In this particular example, I went with highlighting a range. If you're planning to add more data to this, you can either convert this range to a table or you can also just select a whole column. So just to give you an example here, if I just start this over, I'm gonna do equals X lookup. I'm gonna point to this stock number, comma. Then as a lookup array, when I go to the other tab, instead of just selecting this area, I will just grab this whole column C and then comma. And then as a return array, which would be prices, I will grab this whole column E for prices. And at this point, I can simply just close parentheses, hit enter. And technically, because we are selecting the whole column, it's not really necessary to do absolute references. We could just drag this formula like this and it would work. But as a good practice, I'm still gonna go back and click on this, press F4 on this and click on return array F4 on this too, just to make them absolute and drag it down like so. So another thing that could be useful sometimes is to return multiple columns instead of just one column. So what if I need prices and cost too, instead of just prices, how would I do that? So it's gonna be very similar. What I would do, I would simply just go here, do my X lookup point to this comma, go to my lookup array and go to that other tab and highlight the range or column where we're gonna find that value, so stock numbers, comma, and when it gets to this return array, instead of just selecting one column that would be price, I'm just gonna select multiple columns like this, so price and cost, and then I can go here, close parentheses, and hit enter, and you're gonna see how I get both of those, and then I can drag this down, and we will get both of those columns at the same time. And if you, for example, wanted to also get IDs, 
you could select three columns and it would grab you all three columns instead of just two. And then finally, if you want some sort of custom handling for those NAs, if we only want to just return a single column, so for example, if I go back here and change this back to just E to be only one column, like so, then we're only going to get prices on this. I'm going to drag it down. So to handle this NA, see if I want some custom handling, I could go back here and do a comma and say, if not found, let's say, let's put a zero in there. I can type a zero, hit enter and drag it down like this. Or maybe you want to have some text or blank. In those cases, you would go here and instead of the zero in quotes, you would say not available or something that would be your text. Or if you want to leave it blank, you could simply just do double quotes like so to leave it empty. So at this point, if I drag it down, you would see that instead of a zero, we're just going to get an empty cell. So finally, if I want to go back now and change this to E through F, which is price and cost, two columns, and drag it down, you'll see that this works in a case of blank just fine. But if I wanted to, let's say, do a zero here, like so, I'm going to do if not found, do a zero and drag it down, you'll see that zero will only work for this first column, but not for the second column. Now to get that zero for that second column as well, I can go back and erase this zero here and add an array like so, curly brackets. And in curly brackets, I'll do zero for the first column, comma, and also zero for the second column. Now, if you wanted the second one to be something else, you could have something else instead of a zero. So at this point, if I drag it down, you will see both of them would be zeros in case there is no match. Or maybe you want the first one to be blank. So you do this and the second one to be zero. Like so, that should work just fine. Now, finally, if you hate this whole idea of going to this other tabs and selecting your data from here, when you do your X lookups, you can actually do something else here. So if I just erase this, so this would work especially well if you have multiple screens. So you can go here under view and under view, you can click new window. And that's basically just going to open that same file in a second window for you which means for this one, you could just drag it over to a different screen. Now, since I'm recording this, I'm not going to be able to push it to a different screen. So I'll keep it here on the side. And on this window, I'm going to go to other tab, which is my second tab. So at this point, I'm going to actually make this other window smaller. So it doesn't go over my first window. If I wanted now to get that match, let me just move this a little bit more. Now, if I want to do this and I don't want to jump between different tabs, I can just have this on two different screens and do my X lookup, point to my common match, comma. Then as a lookup array, I can just go here and select this stock numbers, this, or you can do the whole column in case you have clean data sets, like in this case I do. So I'm going to do that, comma. And then you can just go here and highlight the column or columns you'd like to return. So if I do price, Close parentheses. I'm going to hit enter when I'm done and that should return the price here. Then I can just double click in this little box or click and drag it down and that should pull this formula down. And at this point, if I go ahead and close this other window right here that I just opened, it's not even going to ask me if I want to save this because that window over here, the same file is still already open. So basically it's like we have two windows, but they're both exactly the same file. So if I go to this other window that I was working on, if I'm done with this, I could just X out of this and this will still be here and I'll get my matches and you can at this point save your file and do whatever you got to do. And that should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.